let's see what happens here. Now that we lost a few games and we're a little bit lower ranked, it might be that we see more more non-meta decks, so this might not be a cube priest. Every priest I have seen for a very long time has always been a cube priest. But this might not be. Because we're now like 500 ranks slower than we were. 400. Well, the priest kept everything. That is an extremely bad sign. That is really not something I wanted to see. I mean, you are going to have a Disciple of Calagrand in hand, right, if you keep everything. No? Then why keep everything? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Happy Midsummer Festival. I want multiple ox spores, do I not? I think I do. Is there going to be a buff on this? Possibly. I still just play the Sager. Let's see what happens. Or he was AFK. No, then it would have taken longer for the Mulligan's, Mulligan phase. So, definitely a cube priest. Now the question for me is, what do I do about that? Now that I know it's a cube priest. I'm actually going to play Keeper Stellaris here. And I'm going to deal 3 damage to that one. He's going to cube this. Grave Rune on this one is going to happen. Every time. There's no Shadow Madness in that deck, unless it's randomly generated. Ray Rune on that did not happen. I am genuinely surprised. Seven cards in hand, so that's a little bit too many cards. Elise copies from left to right, but I want two Dragon Queens, so I need to play one card before the Elise. Which card is that? It's the Solar Wrath, isn't it? I'll go down six cards in hand. This, this one, five cards in hand, they will be copied. So that one goes over there. We destroy the ramp. Then it's time to play Elise. Let's duplicate the hand. And play an Ox Spore. Very well. Nine cards in hand. I have two Dragon Queens. I have a pair of Starfalls. I have a pair of Bog Beams, which will be free within two turns. Oh, it's the it's Paper Ninja's Cube Lander deck. Okay. Well, then he has access to Shadow Madness now. I have to say that I did not see that coming. It was not very likely that someone would be playing that particular deck. sometimes happens. Well, then this can get more awkward. I could just pew 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 here. Costs five mana. Contradictions. Stand the time run Hands off! Alright, there's a little bit I'm a little bit sad that he got the mischief and prime. Because of obviously the cube archetype doesn't run Shadow Madness. And there was only renew or if it turned out to be the Highlander cube then there was the possibility of Zephyrus. Alright. And arc, another rock spore. Let's see where this one's going. I have a couple of dragon queens coming. 
So maybe we can run him out of removal. There is still no... Oh, randomly generate. Well... That was surprising. I would say wholly unexpected. Now there might be problems coming for me. We'll see in due time. For an archetype that doesn't run Shadow Madness, there's been a lot of Shadow Madness going on here. So he got both Mischief and Primes. That is an extremely sad occurrence. Well, there is only one real board clear card in that deck. So we'll see. Now it's time to go with the first Dragon Queen. Suppose a bit of Alex Tra's action here. I bring life. A bit of bog beaming. I suppose we'll do a little bit of bog beaming too. And why not drop the fairy dragon as well? Okay. There is just one soul mirror in that deck, of course. But I mean, what are the odds that he has that one too here? And apparently in this version, this is not this is not Paper Ninja's Cube Blender. This is some weird version because there usually isn't a plague of death in that archetype. So I've been playing, I've been playing against this like it was one of the known versions, but it turns out that it isn't. Do I need to ration out my threats? Or do I need to try to put How as many threats as possible, as quickly as possible? I may need to ration them out a little bit here. I embark on that. Let's see how this goes. But even if this survives, that's still not lethal. And there could be the Galagrond if he keeps drawing absolute nuts here. So far this has been... This is, this is truly remarkable. I can only say that this has been truly remarkable. In time, all foods are possible. In time, all foods are Alright. I played around the Soul Mirror last turn, but obviously Galagrond was able to clear. And if he had Galagrond but no Soul Mirror, then, and if he hasn't drawn a Mischief and Prime now, then this could still potentially win the game. He actually has been able to draw the Mischief and Prime. That is a very, very sad thing. I don't even know why I bother. No more niceties. Well, we can kill the Mischief and Prime. Now is the time. But we can push some damage to the face. Can the priest draw good stuff again? Let's see. Down to 8 health. Does the priest run out of stuff? If there is an apotheosis for that one, it's obviously insane. Not an apotheosis, but there was a random holy smite. Well, it's not totally random, of course. It was from his deck, but... Oh, boy. Now, the Rusty Trader kills the set deck. There are a couple of random cards in his hand. A 
Okay, we'll talk the Mind Flayer. And randomly generated Skeletal Dragon is an excellent choice. I can kill the randomly generated Skeletal Dragon. And set up another potential lethal here. But the priest is next going to top deck. What? Second Mishifen Prime. There is a considerable chance that I lost this game now. I played this game like I would be playing against Cube Priest, because that's kind of what was implied there. But it turns out that it was actually the Highlander version and then some totally random junk happened a lot. I couldn't actually afford to draw, I would have technically been alive with the Winged Guardian hero power there. Now I'm dead through that. Yeah. Single 7-7 seven, seven taunt wouldn't be enough either. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.